Okay, happy Monday night. I'm so excited that all of you are joining us on this uh, Memorial Day. And we're so thankful for those who served and gave the ultimate, paid the ultimate price for our freedoms. And that's one of the things that we put in our 60 day hard group today was what freedom are you most thankful for? And the one I am most thankful for is the freedom that I can worship um, my Lord anywhere, anytime, any place that I want to. So very thankful for that. Um, and I am, I'm so excited tonight. So a lot, a lot of us are doing 60 day hard challenges. Some are starting tomorrow. Some we are on day 44. Woohoo! And then some we are starting with our customers on Wednesday. So don't forget to, to lock that in, get the, get the promo locked in. Um, you've got two day. you got tonight and all day tomorrow. So people are, will not be vacationing tomorrow. So get on it. Don't stop until the last minute because the only limits you put on, on yourself, the, the only limits that you have with this are the ones that you put on yourself. So I am going to stop talking and I am going to turn it over to the beautiful Ambassador Jaina Dyer. And if you'll just share a little bit about your story, I, most of us know you, but some don't. We've got some new people on here. Share a little bit about your story, where you came from, how your life has changed, and then give us some uh, tidbits of goodness. Amen. Yay. Thank you so much, Melissa, for having me on here. It's always an honor for sure. And just looking at you, oh my gosh, I can totally tell you look amazing and your face is thinner. Your skin looks amazing and you look like 20 years younger. So I'm proud of you. Yay. Yeah. So, and, and again, I will receive that just so you know, I will receive that. Amen. Amen. It's always an honor to come on here and you guys just being a part of Melissa's team is you have an advantage because she is all in over here and um, is a true leader, not just a business savvy girl, but she is in the trenches with you guys and doing the do has a huge vision with singular, which I think she kind of wants me to talk about tonight. And, um, you know, is a God girl and just a person that I would want to hang out even outside of singular, just because of who she is. So I want to know in the comment section, like, um, you know, how long you've been with singular and maybe one thing that, that you want to learn or ask me, and then I'll go back to it um, when we're done. So I've been with Zingular for 12 years, you guys. And, you know, um, I'm a former dental hygienist, ranch wife, rodeo mom, wear lots of hats. And um, when I got started, my kids were seven and 11. And I didn't was working full time as a dental hygienist and really didn't have time to tie my shoe. <clears throat> so when Callis Tadell called me about the business and said, Jaina, oh my gosh, you need to take a look at this. This is going to be big. I was like, gosh, no, don't even talk to me about the business. I can't even see straight. My life is so busy, but I did get started on the products. And even though I told her, no, you guys, I'm an opportunist and um, Zingular isn't my first company. I was in Arbonne in my early twenties, worked it really hard for six years. And that's one of the reasons I said no. Also, I believed in the industry but I, I didn't have the energy to work my tail off to create, you know, a thousand dollars a month is which the most I ever earned in Arbonne. And I knew the amount of work it took to make a thousand dollars in Arbonne. I didn't have time to do that in singular, but you guys, I'm an opportunist. And once I got started on the products, there's two things. I was like, oh my gosh, I noticed right away. We had a winner. It really wasn't in weight loss. I started out as a size six, but I got my spark back. I got my happy back and I wasn't hungry all day. And I was like, this is a winner to take to market. And the second thing that um, really lit me up was Cal at the time had her kids ranged from four years old to 18, seven kids. And she was running a retail store and she was making $2,000 a month on the side. You guys, $2,000. That was like a lot of money. So guess what? Some things in our lives changed. My husband had to close the doors on his business because of an injury. And a dentist came and bought the practice out and my wages were cut in half and my kids were getting more expensive. And, you know, I was like, what are my options really? You know, to go make $2,000 a month 
to bring my husband home so he could homeschool our son. That was my big why. Um, another story, another day, it makes me cry. So I'm not going to talk about it, but you know, I just wanted him to be able to do that. And so, um, I dug in with both feet. I said, I don't have time to figure it out. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And I'm a hard worker. I was like, I'm going to work hard wherever I'm planted. And so the thing is, you guys, I really did look at what my options were to create an extra $2,000 a month. There were no, there were no more hours in the day to work as a dental hygienist, even though I made great money, close to six figures, you guys, but they're, you know, and my body couldn't take it. I could go back to school to become like a dental whatever and make more money, but that wasn't optional. We live 20 minutes from anywhere, two hours from any school, that wasn't an option. And so I knew the industry, I love the industry, the whole idea of time leverage. And so um, literally just found 15 minutes of nooks and crannies and just worked like crazy in, in those nooks and crannies. I gave up some things, I stopped watching television um, and hired a house cleaner because I didn't have time to clean in the toilet when I wasn't working dentistry, when I wasn't doing Zingular, I wanted to be with my family. I didn't want to be cleaning the toilet. So um, started delegating, you know, found the nooks and crannies, was bad before I was good, did things uncomfortable, but here's what kept me going, that vision of what my life would look like when my son was not in public school and was able to be home and being homeschooled. And Zingular probably literally saved his life because I had a third grader that would literally hold onto the steering wheel and say he was gonna kill himself if he had to go to school one more day. It was not good. Anyway, like I say, another day, another story, but you know, I worked really hard for like a year and that happened. And I thought, gosh, you know what? Maybe if I work a little bit harder, you know, that 2000 can turn into 3000 and I can drop a day at work. So that happened. You know, I thought maybe if I earn three, maybe I can earn five and drop another day <laughs> and go part time. And it all sounds easy, but you know, it was like a roller coaster, ups and downs, ups and downs. People came, people left. It took me six months to find my first person that wanted to be a distributor that did anything. Six months, you guys. And I was working every day and digging in in the trenches, but it took six months before somebody even showed up to maybe even kind of want to look at the business. So if that's you, anybody relate? Okay. Yeah. So anyway, um, gosh, so I worked part-time in dentistry for five years until um, my income literally surpassed the dentist that I was working for. And I liked my career, you guys, it's not like I hated dentistry and that was my intent is to quit my job, but you know, it was like, gosh, you know, it's almost costing me to be there because my income had grown so much with singular and, you know, getting to travel the world, getting time freedom. My kids were older now and in activities and I wanted to be present with them and not miss things. And, um, you know, there was few and far between that I had to miss any events. Now during a basketball game, I might've checked out at halftime or, you know, between games to do three-way calls or something. This was before, you know, we had Facebook groups. This was before Facebook was a huge social selling deal. It was before Facebook lives. It was, you know, before we had lots of tools. So people are doing it a lot faster in this day and age, but vision, you guys, it's like, what gets you through the hard times? Because we all know that this business is, it's easy, but it's just as easy not to do. And we know it's tough. It's a tough mental game. You know, showing up and doing the activities is, is easy, but it's what goes on between your, your ears that trips us up, right? Like, oh gosh, what will they say? Oh gosh, I'm afraid to talk to her. Oh gosh, you know, but the thing is, the only thing that fear motivated me was this, gosh, if I don't talk to her, she's probably going to join with somebody else or join another company. And I would hate to see that happen. And guess what? Sometimes it did happen because I let fear get in the way and they would end up under somebody else or in another company. And sometimes you just had to, to do it. I never, even today as an ambassador, I don't wake up and be like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to be reaching out to people and getting into conversations with people. It's just, it's tough. I'm going to be totally transparent. But again, okay, when I was in dentistry, before I became a dental hygienist, I worked in, 
in a dentist office. And every day, you guys, I had to literally pick up the landline phone and dial about 30 patients and talk to them on the phone to confirm that they were going to come to the dentist the next day for their appointment. Could not stand doing that, you guys. I hated calling and confirming patients, but I always did it in the morning because so I could get it out of the way and then go on and do other things that I like. So little piece of tip on the side, you know, get up and do the things that maybe you don't enjoy doing right off the bat without even thinking about it. Just do it and get it out of the way. And you'll feel so much better mentally when you do. It's kind of like exercising. If I don't exercise first thing in the morning, it don't happen. And if I don't have my shorts and my tennis shoes right by the bed and my glass of water made and everything right there laid out, prepared, it's probably not going to happen. So the night before, just plan your day, plan your day and work your plan and then plan it, do it, do it, and then review it. There's so many times, even as an ambassador, that that is my mode of action. Plan it, do it, and then review it. Cause you can, I'm like, okay, how could I have done that better? How could I have made that conversation better? But anyway, the vision part, I want to share with you guys, one of the driving forces for me building my business was the travel, our passport program. I always wanted to travel you guys. And I would visualize being at the next event, like the Sundance headquarters retreat used to be at Sundance. I was actually on the very first one. And that's why I was like, oh my gosh, I got to work my tail off. I got to work my tail off. So my husband and I can go on that free trip. And so earned that trip. And then the next trip, I think was the, this was before Founders Club or anything, was the Caribbean cruise. 50,000, you guys, that was, I mean, keep in mind that there was like two executives in the beginning and platinum director was like executive, you know, is today, which Platinum director is a big deal today too. But anyway, you guys, I worked and worked and worked and I missed it. I missed the cruise by like one month. I missed it. But I was like, okay, well, I can pout for a few days and then I'm going to get to work and I'm going to earn the cruise next year. But my big vision was this, you guys, it was taking my kids and seeing them see the ocean for the first time. So I would like visualize like when I didn't want to do things or I needed motivation. I would play the video in my head of my kids packing their bags and in February and it's cold outside and we're packing our shorts and we're packing our swimsuits and they're packing their bags and they're getting on the plane, flying for the first time. They're, we're landing, we're, you know, getting on the boat, they're seeing the ocean for the first time and seeing them experience that because, you know, they had to make some sacrifices too. And that was their reward was getting to go on the cruise. It was the coolest thing ever. And so, you know, visualize like where you want to go. I visualized for years, you know, being able to work part-time in dentistry. I visualized for years what it would be like to not have to get up and go to work 12 hours a day. It was, you know, the Bible says without a vision that people perish. So let me ask you this, and I want you to put it in the comments. What little vision do you have that you're constantly playing in your head? Your vision needs to be like a movie that you're constantly playing over and over in your head. So in the comment section, I want to see in, and not in the comment section, in the chat. Okay. I got to go back up here. What's going on? I'm looking at the chat. Debt free. Oh my gosh. Hillary Brown debt free. That was a big one for me too. So in the beginning, one of the coolest things we did, we paid our truck off seven months early and it was the coolest thing. And, you know, chipping away at that debt. So Hillary, my challenge to you is to, maybe you've got a car payment that you're, you know, loath paying. I want you to just write a big check out, literally write a big check out. This is what I did. And I put it on my vision board and put last payment. You can put it for whatever amount that you want and wrote last payment. Upgrades on the house. Yes, um, one of my distributors was able to put new carpet in their house because of Zingular. So I want you to go pick out your carpet, Melissa, <laughs> and pick out some upgrades that you want. And I can't wait to see your house. That's so exciting. Buy a beach house. Okay, Sharon, like 
Get a picture of that beach house and put it in front of you by buying 100 acres. Get a picture of that, put it on your vision board, you guys. Put it on your screensaver. Um, seeing my paying off bills. Yes, I love that. Spending time with family and being debt free. Building a house. I want you to get a picture of the house that you want, Luann, and put it on your vision board. Um, and I'm going to scroll back up here and answer some questions. What is your best advice for growing your team? You know what? I want you guys to make your team, number one, a culture that everybody belongs and everybody feels loved and everybody feels appreciated no matter what their production is. So what if they are here for the just to be a part of something and are casual refers and every now and then they're going to refer somebody? That's okay because here's the deal. This is talking about culture. I want you to think of your team as a deck of cards and how many aces are in a deck of cards Four. Well, you're looking for four aces, but actually, you know what? In singular, if you find two aces, you're pretty much on fire just because we have such a gift with our comp plan. But the deck of cards is also made up of kings and queens and twos and threes and low numbers, right? And guess what? There's a couple jokers in every deck of cards. Anybody? Yeah. But it takes the whole deck of cards to play the game. And it's going to take a whole deck of cards to grow your team. Just, you know, there's only 2% of the people of your team that's going to want what you want and go big. And that's okay. There's a place for everybody on your team. Love people where they're at and help them see a little bit further. That's how you grow your team. Love people where they're at and help them see a little bit further. So if they see $1,000 a month, Help them see a little bit more, twelve to fifteen hundred dollars a month. So I hope that answers your question. And always be, it's all in the new, also, Tammy. Even if you have a team, keep going as wide as you can. Keep sponsoring, keep looking, don't get into management mode. Keep sponsoring. Praying, yes, pray over your business for sure. I have been here four years. What do you look for in builders? Um, I, there's three things that I tell people when I have a crucial conversation with every new person that tells me that they want to build the business and the crucial conversation, I've got some questions that I ask, but anyway, the three things that I say that is going to be required of them is they need to be willing, coachable, and hungry, willing, because we can't build their business for them. They're going to have to build the business for themselves. We can tell them what to do, but guess what? They're going to have to go do it. And I set the expectations up in the beginning. The second thing is coachable. You guys, not that we, and I say not that I know everything, but I've been down the road a lot further than you have. I've done it the right way and the wrong way. And I'm going to help you cut the learning curve out and hungry. And I say, you know what? This business is amazing, but it has a lot of highs and lows and the highs are really high and the lows are really lows. So, you know, what is going to get you through those tough times? What are you hungry for? What can I remind you of why you're doing this? And you got to be hungry. So those are the three things that I look for in builders. And I give them, how do I know how serious they are, you guys? That's a good, that's a good question. Um, by giving them assignments. If I give them an assignment, and they don't respond back, maybe it's too big of an assignment. Maybe it's too big for their, so maybe I'll back off to a smaller assignment. So they're not overwhelmed, you know? And if they don't do the assignment, that kind of tells me how serious they are too. And not that I get in their face and scold them because we're not their boss, but I give them an assignment and it's their responsibility to get back to me. And it's super, it can be super simple. It can be take the products. <laughs> Your first assignment is take the products. Or invite five people to the results group, you know? Yeah. So um, what is your, what's your best relationship building tip? Um, I would say just caring about people and listening. God gave us two ears and one mouth. And sometimes we want to puke singular and be so excited. But sometimes the best relationship business building tip is just, you know, listening, listening to where people are at. Because you guys, we are not selling products and we're not selling a business. People aren't buying a business and they're not buying products. You know why? They're buying you. This is a relationship business. So anything you can do to help grow your relationships, 
um, do it. It's a skill. How do you get folks to become distributors? Ask, ask if they're open, tell a story. Do you do anything special to respond to people who ghost you? Yeah, usually I'll be like, hey, um, don't know if you saw my message. Hope nothing bad's happened. Let me know you're okay. So that's, you know, one reason. That's one way that I do that. I encourage the benefits of becoming a distributor. Just share a story, you know. Gosh, I just had somebody, I just had somebody join and they got their first check and were able to, you know, pay for their products, you know, share stories. I think that's good. So I know I'm answering these really quick, but we have a, a, a Zoom at 8.30 or not a Zoom, but anyway. So Melissa, I've talked a lot. Sorry, I'm talking so much. <laughs> Do you have anything to add or anything else for me to cover? I mean, just how has your life changed? Like how has the, the income that you make as an ambassador and platinum executive, how has your life changed from where it was? Okay. I, oh my gosh. So, you know, being able to write a check to our college, to the college that my kids go to, so they don't have a ton of college debt was huge. You guys, the FAFSA, I'm like, I'm not filling out that FAFSA. What do we owe? You know? And, um, about three years ago, our church is building on an annex fellowship hall. And the land was like $10,000. And they were like, oh gosh, you know, how are we going to do that? I wrote a check for $10,000 to our church so they could, we could build, we could build. That's one I've been able to give more, you guys. I had a friend that just lost her husband and daughter and couldn't pay for the funeral, wrote a check for $4,000 to help my friend. You know, just being able to give back, we're able to give my daughter her dream wedding. Um, none of it would have been possible without Singular. None of it. We're building our dream house right now, set to move in in August. Never, you, you guys, when my husband and I got married, we lived in a single white trailer and we used to lay in bed at night and listen to the mousetraps go off. We upgraded to a double wide trailer seven years later, and we lived in that double wide trailer until just now. And we're building our dream house, paying cash for cars. I mean, I could go on and on, but just more important than that is my time, my time freedom to go do and be what I want to do on my own watch when I want, how I want and how big I want to go. I got one more question for you. When people are in the roller coasters and they're doing the things every day, they're doing what they're supposed to do every single day and they're not seeing that they're not seeing the results. They're not seeing the signups. What is your, what do you want to tell them? Like right now, how to get through those monotonous times in order to what's ahead. I've been there, you guys, and I've done it. And I'll tell you a quick story. So hit silver executive. And I stayed there for like three years three years in and out doing the do, doing the do, doing the do every single day, nothing was happening until three years. And then we hit gold. And then a few months later we hit platinum and everybody in the whole company was going, Gina calling me, texting me, what are you doing? Share your secret. What are you doing to grow? And I'm like, listen, you guys, I'm not doing anything that I haven't done for the last three years. I finally just found some people that want to do this. And it's a numbers game. You guys, it's a total numbers game. And what you need to be doing now every day and what I was doing every day is becoming a lifetime learner and building my skills. I'd be like, how can I get better at prospecting? How can I get better at product coaching? How can I get better at social media? And I'm still doing that today. How can I get better? And the best investment you can make is in yourself for personal growth. And it costs money. You guys, I've spent a college tuition, a college tuition on my singular business. But guess what? it's paid off. You have, this is a skill building business and it's okay to, you know, invest, to get help, to learn, to grow your skills. So build your skills and keep going and stay plugged in and do not miss events. I never missed an event. No matter how bad down I was, I never missed an event because that's how I got plugged up and, and just got resold 
every single event. And the, the event may have been a Zoom. The event may be a, um, a, a room at the top. Doesn't have to necessarily be a live event, which yeah, you wanna be at conference, but yeah. I love that. And I'm the same way. Yeah, it's, it's you've got to pour into yourself before you can pour into. And I always say, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room because your team's never going to outgrow you. So I love you so much. And I'm so appreciative that you joined us tonight. And I love your story. I love your journey. And I love you paving the way for all of us because we are all ambassadors, but our points just haven't got there yet. So that's right. I want to say one more thing. And, you know, I want you guys, whenever you're like, feel like you're down and you're just, things aren't happening. Um, another thing that I did was the prayer of Jabez mm -hmm. in my territory. And I really got in the word and thought and prayed a lot, you know, please God bring, first of all, make me a leader that's ready for a big team. Because if you're not ready for a big team, maybe God's not blessing you with a big team because maybe you're not ready for your team to blow up. There was seasons in my life that if I would have blown up, I wouldn't have been ready for it. And pray to God to highlight the people that he has in store for you. And you better watch grumbling. It's okay to have, you know, a few pouty sessions, but don't stay there because guess what? The Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years. Why? Because they grumbled and they never got to the promised land. So there's always something to be grateful for always. And you have to look for it sometimes in this business. You have to look for it anyway. Okay. That's all little Jesus. So there. Yes, that's, that's so true. And I, and I have actually got that printed out in my office and I pray that over, uh, over a lot of stuff, just, not just our team, but a lot of stuff. So, all right, guys, I'm not going to open it up tonight because like she said, we have to do another zoom, but I am going to go ahead and declare Ephesians 320 over all of you. God is going to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can think or ask because we honor him. His blessings are going to chase us down and overtake us. We are in the right place at the right time. And I declare a boldness to rise up in each one of you. God is going to open supernatural doors. People are going to seek you out and we are going to rise in the ranks because we give him the honor and glory. Love you guys. Have a great night. Thank you.